Let's go. The Cardiac Kids do it again. Another walk off their second of the series. I don't know if I'm going to make it through 162. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. This, this team stresses me out, but man, I'm having a heck of a time and enjoying this ride. And that's what I will say before I go any further. Enjoy it. This team is playing good baseball and we should be having fun right now. That That's how I will leave this off. What is up? What is going on, everybody? Welcome back and welcome into the Seattle Mariners post game recap. Mariners defeat the Chicago White Sox tonight, two to one. They blow in the ninth inning, walk it off in the 10th, and they improve to a season best 10 games over 500. They will be at worst six and a half up in the AL West. Um, the Dodgers still have six outs to work with to try and rally against Texas. Would be awesome to be seven and a half up, but I ain't complaining about six and a half. You came in today, Fangraphs had the Mariners at a 70% odds to make the playoffs. That did not go down today, that's for sure. And like I said yesterday, every day you keep that lead and you get a little bit closer. A lot of baseball left. I will still make, this was game 70, still 92 games left. But again, that, it, it, you know, eventually it's going to be like, oh, there's a lot of games left. There's 85. There's 78, there's 59, there's 32. You, you know what I mean? It's going to happen fast. And the more you keep winning, you know, if the Mariners keep winning, I'm obviously not going to win every game, but Texas can't catch you if you win all of them. So um, any win you can get is, is a beautiful thing right now. Now, that doesn't mean this game didn't have its frustrations. Um, I think it's, is it Jonathan Cannon? I, I'm great with last names. I struggle with first names, but I got it. It was Jonathan Cannon. Jonathan Cannon shut them down. That was a little frustrating. Uh, Mike Bauman blows the save in the ninth. That was frustrating. So yeah, it, listen, that, that's not to say that every win is rainbow, sunshine, and lollipops all across the board. I would love to see this team win a couple 10 nothing games. If anything, just for the old heart a little bit. And I think a lot of you would agree with that. <laughs> like I, I, I would like a nice sit down, relax, and see the team win 12 nothing. I thought we were going to get that on Friday in Kansas City. Didn't happen. But again, you know, look at the White Sox. Like they're 17 and 52. Those fans will gladly, gladly switch places with us right now. So it's important to, you know, we got to look at how this team can improve. I, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say like it's perfect and they don't need to do anything. They're, they're a World Series lock. No, of course not. They've got to make some improvements. But I'm also not going to sit here and get negative on a team that's got a six and a half game lead and is 10 games over 500. And, and they're built to kind of play games like this. This is how the roster is built. You have great pitching, hopefully some timely hitting, some guys that can hit some home runs. I hope the offense could be better than it's been. And it should be. And a lights out bullpen. Now, unfortunately, your bullpen right now, tonight, was missing its top five guys, right? Andres Munoz is still day-to-day -day with the back stuff. He's been getting injections for it. And he's just, you know, you could debate IL him or not. It, you know, if you think you can have him back for Texas, I'd probably not IL him. But, you know, he's pitched one game in the last eight also. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know. But Munoz down. Stanek was down tonight pitching back-to-back -back games. Gabe Spires on the injured list. Gregory Santos and Matt Brash. Coming into the year, that was your big five. Those were the guys, you know, maybe can sub Stan and, and they might not have even signed Stanek if Brash and Santos were healthy, but you know what I'm saying, right? You guys get where I'm coming from with that. It's hard to go to your sixth, seventh, eighth options and close out a lot of games. It, it is not an easy thing to do. Now, you know, maybe could have left Austin Voth in there another inning. Probably what I would have done, Voth is a guy that has pitched multiple innings before and he was lights out in the eighth inning. Maybe do that. Mike Bauman, for whatever reason, in the ninth is just not working out. Um, it's kind of not fun. Well, I guess it is kind of funny. Bauman, if you remember, was the guy last year for the Orioles that Canzone hit the home run off of in that Sunday afternoon game. Baltimore ended up winning, but uh, he couldn't get the save there. Bauman has no career saves and he's had two chances in the last few days and hasn't been able to to get it done. And I, th I think you just got to kind of end that experiment there. Um, whether you leave both in, whether you go to Trent Thornton, who looked lights out tonight. And we, we know Thornton's had some struggles coming in with inherited runners, but it's looked really good without him. Although he did great tonight with inherited runners. Or you say, listen, it was Luis Robert. Now it was not a good pitch from Bauman, but you know, it's the one guy you don't want to see in those spots. It's the one guy in the white Sox that can really kill you. And it's where you're missing your big five. But anyways, going back to what I was saying originally, at the end of the day, it's a great win. And when you're playing the type of ball the Mariners are playing, and you're fighting for every win to win this division, and truthfully, not just win the division, but you know, to, to catch, listen, there's a lot of steps here, but I'm not trying to get ahead of myself. 
but you want to get one of those first two spots, right? If you want to try and catch a Cleveland, I don't know if you're going to catch the Yankees or Baltimore, whoever wins the East, but a team like Cleveland to get a wild card series off if you're fortunate enough to win the division. So there is no such thing as a bad win. No such thing. There are ones that are a lot more frustrating than others and ones that have more criticisms. Had the Mariners beaten Kansas City like 13 nothing that day, there's not a lot of negatives to talk about. This game does have some, but it is still a good win. And at this point in the year, with what we're up against and what we're trying to accomplish, I'm not turning my back on any, any win that you can get. So a great win for the Mariners. Let's look at the box score here. Bryce Miller was outstanding. Seven innings, two hits, two walks, eight Ks. Uh, great to see Bryce Miller go seven. Saves the bullpen a little bit. Um, now the game ends up going 10. So if you do have to use essentially three, four relievers, but great outing from Bryce Miller. Good bounce back after a tough outing against Kansas City, uh, where he was just not really sharp. Um, Kansas City's a pesky lineup. They don't strike out. It was raining a little bit. And Miller just wasn't on his game, and it was truly the perfect storm. Great bounce back today. Listen, that White Sox lineup didn't have Luis Robert in it until the ninth, so not exactly a murderer's row. But Bryce Miller dominated them, and that's what you're supposed to do. He doesn't get a, a negative on his ledger or card because it was the White Sox. He dominated them. Now, had he gone six innings, five earned runs with four walks and two Ks? Yeah, I'm going to be critical of that against Chicago. He had eight strikeouts. Did he walk anybody? He walked two. He was great. He was absolutely fantastic. Kept the game at zeros for them and gave his offense a chance to win this ball game. Bryce Miller was great. Austin Voth was as good as we've seen him this year. Struck out the side in the eighth. Could have made a case for leaving him in for the ninth. I know the Mariners don't like doing that, whether that's a Scott decision or a front office decision outside of the occasional outing for Munoz and maybe later in the year or something. They just don't like having relievers go multiple innings. Which, listen, I'm going to be honest, I think that's helped some of their guys. I think we've seen good performances out of a lot of relievers in the past, like Topa, Spire, Saucedo, Paul Seawald, because they're not asking these guys to be long relievers. However, with what you're dealing with right now, with, with the injuries and, and the, you know, little nagging injuries for these guys, and both being a guy that's been stretched out before, I think you could make a case for it. Now, it's easy to say after Robert hits the home run, and there's no guarantee Voth gets Robert out either, right? Like, Luis Robert's really good. He's capable of taking Andres Munoz, Matt Brash, Santos, Mariano Rivera out of the ballpark. So we don't know if Voth would have gotten through it, but after seeing Bauman's outing, you could certainly make a case for it. Bauman comes in the ninth. Um, I talked about, I think it's kind of time to end Bauman in the ninth experiment. Not against Mike Bauman. I actually think he's done a nice job overall. He's just not my ninth inning guy. He's, he's just not it. Um, you know, for whatever. And listen, I'm not someone that puts a ton of stock into, oh, the ninth is just a different animal than the other innings. Three outs, I think, is three outs. But it's just not working. Like, what they're doing with Bauman right now isn't working with, with the saves. He's just not getting it done. Um and truthfully, you know, even the Robert home run, it was not a good pitch. It was 94 trying to paint it on the corner, I think. And it just left it over the middle of the plate. The, the real issue then, next batter, Andrew Vaughn, who, who's swinging the bat better, but 650 OPS, just misses a home run or a double in the gap that Victor Robles has to chase down. Walks Gavin Sheets. Sheets has been pretty solid this season. Not the worst walk ever, but then a wild pitch. Paul DeYoung comes up, who's been swinging the bat pretty well, just put himself into some trouble that didn't need to be there. Um, you know, I can kind of forgive the Robert home run, I guess. You know, it's it's Luis Robert. It's the one guy you don't want to beat you. It was just kind of funny, too. You know, Sims and Blowers were even saying, like, ah, you don't, don't let Robert beat you. Don't give him one. First pitch gone. It's like Luis Robert had the day off, and it was like, hey, Luis, we need you. Come on up. Come on, do something. Steps up one pitch, it's a home run, and then he's done for the day. So I thought that was kind of uh, poetically funny a little bit. So again, I'm not sure why Luis Robert is trying to inflict harm on his future employer. I, again, I'm just making jokes. I'm not trying to start a debate on acquire Robert or not. I'll have plenty of time to talk about that here in the next few weeks. But it's kind of a funny joke to say. Well, maybe if, now it's not funny because I've ruined it and said it. But you know what I mean? Um but Bauman does get out of it. Kudos to him. Ends up working around, maybe not having his best stuff. And Robert home run gets it to the ninth. Um, Mariners don't score in the ninth. Julio does have a tremendous walk against Kopech. Spit on some good pitches, fouled off some tough ones. That was a really nice walk.
for Julio Rodriguez. Um, Cal struck out, um, and then Rayleigh um, flew out to left to in the ninth. In the tenth, great job by Trent Thornton. I know you're not facing necessarily the most dangerous hitters here. Oh, actually, Bauman, I'm sorry. Bauman did not fully get out of the ninth. Saucedo came in and got uh, Mendick out for the second game in a row. So he's probably tired of seeing Saucedo. They brought him in to face uh, Colos, and then Mendick pinched hit. So kudos to Sauce for getting out of the spot there with a the runner on second. So nice job by Taylor Saucedo. And listen, again, not the best lineup in the world, but you get a runner at second with one out. You don't have to do much. We saw in the 10th inning, Mitch Haniger did not hit the, you know, snot out of the baseball, but he got one to drop in. You get the run in and you win the game. So nice job by Sauce and even Bauman to get out of that a, a little bit there because it doesn't take much to get that run in in that situation. Trent Thornton, like I said, was lights out. Uh, Deloach grounded out, moved the runner over. Sosa grounds out to third. Rojas, just a fantastic play. Um, I, I will say this, I you know, I didn't love the Gino Suarez trade. Not that I didn't, I, I didn't have a problem moving on from Eugenio Suarez. I just thought the return maybe could have a little bit been a little bit better. Well, Gino's been benched in Arizona, and it sounds like there's been some rumors that his roster spot is kind of on the line. I'm in Arizona, um, so I listen to a lot of AZ Sports Talk on the radio. I'm in my car all day, um, not all day, but I go to different places and stuff for work. So. Um, they've talked about it. Like they are not big fans of Eugenio Suarez out here, at least the player. I know we all love the guy. I think the Mariners were right. And maybe the reason you didn't get a big return on Gino was the Mariners weren't the only ones seeing the decline. That might've truly been the best you can get. And Rojas has been a better player. And I'd still probably say in a pinch, I'd probably take Gino's glove. I haven't looked at the numbers this year, but man, Rojas has played a great third base defensively. And then Thornton gets Benintendi to strike out. Was a little nervous there. Benintendi's not good, but he killed the Mariners last year. I don't know if you guys remember, but man, he had some huge games against the Mariners last season. So good to see him get Benintendi. We go to the bottom of the 10th. Garver actually puts a decent swing on the ball, um, but it goes into left field. Easy play for who is in left field. Uh, Benintendi to make, and Rayleigh can't advance on that. And then they walk Dom Canzone, which was smart. Sets up the double play with Mitch Haniger. And listen, I will say this. Mitch didn't hit that ball very hard. Um, don't really care what the exit velo was. I'm sure it was in the 60s or 70s. But I actually thought that was a really, really good at-bat by Mitch Haniger. He fouled off some tough sweepers, laid off a couple fastballs that you could try to go after to poke the other way. That was a nice at-bat. And it's a perfect example of what people talk about. And, and I'm even talking about other people because I've been one to say like, ah, eh, strikeouts, whatever. But when you put the ball in play, when you stay alive in an at-bat, good things can happen. Mitch Haniger proved that in that at-bat. So was the result perfect? No, I'd love to see Mitch Haniger hit one out and line one 105 off the bat. But it was a good at-bat to battle. And, and that's what you're trying to do. That's the goal there. Poke one into right field there softly. Rayleigh got a great read on it. Scores easily. Mariners win. That was a good at-bat by Mitch Haniger. And I think he does deserve credit for it. I absolutely do. Let's look at the offense. Uh, JP and Rojas, listen, not rough game for the offense, right? Like, let me talk about that first, and then we'll get in the box score a little bit. I didn't think they looked great on, they had a pretty good series in Kansas City. Let's be honest, they swung the bats pretty well. They did not look great against Eric Feedy. Now, feedy has been really good, and sometimes good pitchers shut you down. Regardless of what we think of this offense, I didn't have a huge, I, listen, getting shut out or giving, you know, only getting the one run is frustrating, but it wasn't like, oh my gosh, how could you get shut out? Like just because it's the White Sox doesn't mean they don't have some good pitchers. Feedy's good. I thought they actually did okay against Thorpe yesterday. Um, I thought Thorpe looked pretty good for his debut and they got him at like a hundred pitches in five innings. were able to get into the bullpen. They scored a couple runs off of him. I didn't think it was a terrible offensive game. Again, Yes, I'd love to see more runs. I want to see more of what they did in Kansas City on Friday in the first inning. Not always going to happen. Didn't think it was terrible. The at-bats were pretty bad today against Cannon. Now, to Cannon's credit, he was painting the corners. I mean, he looked really good. But again, and I'm going to give my credit to, to my friend Mariner Sir, we were talking on DMing on Twitter during the game. And, you know, we, I, we were kind of joking, like, why do these pitchers always against the Mariners, these guys with ERAs in the five and sixes come in and they're just painting sweepers that like, 
I don't think Barry Bonds or Griffey could hit. Fastballs dotted on the corner. Why is it always against us? And he made a good point, and I agree. We both kind of said together. I think what happens is they get outs against the Mariners and their confidence grows. So you get these pitchers that, listen, every major league pitcher has good stuff. We're not talking about any scrubs here. Every pitcher at the big league level, like even though, you know, even a Jonathan Diaz last night, like my gosh, Jonathan Diaz is like one of the top 0.0001% talented people at baseball in the world. I mean, to get to the big leagues, you have to be good. There is no scrub that has ever, ever made it to major league baseball ever. However, in the context then of major league baseball, like Cannon has not been very good this year. But but I think Mariner Sir is right. I think they they gain the, this confidence, they get some outs, and then the stuff kind of improves based on their confidence. They know they can get outs, and if they make a mistake, are the Mariners hitters going to punish them? Occasionally, yes, but for the most part, you know, not really this year. So I think it's a little bit of a chicken and egg thing. Are these guys just dotting corners because they're locked in today? Or the Mariners just not swinging the bats? Well, confidence is going up, and now they're hitting their spots. Not a great game against, in fact, nothing really, I don't think they hit one ball. Well, actually, that's not true. Luke Rayleigh hits the home run off of him. That was over 100. And in the sixth inning, they did hit some balls hard. JP had a line out, so did Rojas. Julio hit one right into the ground, but it was hit pretty hard with a 400 expected batting average. So a little bit better at bats later in the game, but not a good offensive performance and not one that I should, that I'm going to excuse. You should be better against Jonathan Cannon. Again, should you put up eight runs? No, that's, those are outliers, but no reason you can't get two or three there. And then it makes it easier, right? Like, you know, I can sit here and go, oh, Mike Bauman stunk, Mike Bauman stunk. But if you could score two or three runs and he comes in with a three run lead, you're asking a lot of these relievers who are not lights out guys to save one run games or tie games. You know what would help Mike Bauman get a save? A three run lead. And he probably locks that game down. Now he had a two run lead on Sunday, couldn't get it done. But you guys know what I mean, right? Like offense has got to be better against guys like Cannon. That n- no doubt about it. Don't have to light him up, but you got to get more runs. Uh, like I said, JP and Rojas 0 for four, not a lot positives. Um, six hits, three walks, nine Ks, two runs. Um, Julio is 0 for three. I, I will give credit. I thought that was a fantastic walk against Kopech. Uh, Cal had a base hit, was one for four. Luke Rayley won for four, and it was a big one with the home run in the seventh inning. His seventh, and he scored the winning run. Um, so listen, if you're going to get one hit, make it count, hit it over the fence. So I'll give Rayley credit, good game. Uh, <clears throat> Garver 0 for three, did have a nice walk um, earlier in the game. I think that's set up. Um, Dom Canzone had a double down the line, so the Mares did have a scoring chance, I think, in the second or third. Not a great game from Garver, but still seeing the ball good, getting on base, you know, I, it does seem a little bit with some of these guys, like two steps forward, one step back. So I'd love to see another big game here from Garver. It's going to be tough tomorrow against Crochet, but, um, you know, but yeah, yeah, again, you know, nobody was really a big game today. Dom Canzone had a nice game, uh, two for three, double down the line was good to see. His single, <clears throat> excuse me, that, that's another thing all these post games are going to do. I'm going to lose my voice. Um, his single wasn't anything um, necessarily amazing. It was just a little blooper dropped in, but beggars can't be choosers. Good to see a couple hits from Dom Canzone today. Uh, Tyler Locklear had a base hit. He was one for three. Uh, Robles pinch ran for him. That's when JP hit the liner that I thought was going to get in there and make it 2 nothing, but it was caught, and then Robles was doubled off. I, I, I thought it was going to drop in, so I'm not super mad at Robles, but I don't know. I'll leave that up to you guys. Should Robles have gotten back there, or did that look like a base hit, and he was just off on that play? Um, obviously, you know, in hindsight, you'd love him to stay at second, give someone else a chance to to drive in a run, but you know, it, it is what it is. They're just a little unfortunate. Mitch Hanniger one for one pinched hit. Um, cause Lo- Robles pinch ran for Locklear. Hanniger pinch hits for Robles and Mitch made it count. And then Ryan bliss was over two. So not a lot offensively. Nice job by Rayleigh getting the home run. Mitch with a big base hit. Good to see Canzone with a couple hits. They could really use him getting hot and providing something. The ball batted ball data looks pretty decent for Canzone. So, you know, if he can just get a little better against breaking balls, I, I think he could have something there. Um, and again, I'll reiterate every video. Yeah, I want to see additions at the deadline, but I also want to see the current guys get locked in because only so many trades you can make, right? You're not going to turn over the whole roster. 
even if let's say you do get Luis Robert, let's take away. I'm not talking about compensation, right? Like that's a different debate. Let's just say you do get Luis Robert. That makes the lineup better. There's no one that's going to debate Luis Robert doesn't improve this lineup. But if other guys aren't going to hit, it's still just, you know, you're going to need more. You're going to need the current guys to play better. You can't just go out and get guys and just be like, oh, there's your fix. Luis Robert would be great, but that doesn't mean it's still not going to be good if Mitch Garver, Dom Canzone, and Mitch Hanniger get hot uh, as well for you. So again, uh, any win right now is a good win. And, and the good thing too with this team, they're 40 and 30, and I still don't think they fully hit their stride. Now, maybe this is just what it is, and that's fine too. You want to go 40 and 30 every 70 games? No problem with that. That'll put you at 80 and 60, which I think is going to lock you in pretty good to win this division. So no problem with that if that's how they're going to do it. But I still think this team has more in the tank. I still think they should be better offensively. Julio's too good. Garver's played better, but he's better than this. Even Cal, as clutch as Cal's been, his OPS is 700. Cal's better than that. Dodgers have a runner at first with nobody out in the bottom ninth. Please win, Dodgers, please. Um, So you still got guys that aren't playing to the back of their baseball cards. And maybe that's not going to happen. Sometimes it doesn't. But I, I do think it's in there. And some good injury news. Can't believe I didn't even mention that. Brian Wu's MRI, perfectly clean. He'll be slated back into the rotation here pretty soon. Great news. Um, Ty France is expected to only miss about 10 days, which I don't know how that's humanly possible. I like Tyler Locklear, but Ty France is a better hitter, and he's been locked in. Get him back in there at first base. Ty should be back soon for the road trip, hopefully. Um, Gregory Santos making progress. Jorge Polanco is going to go off, and go off on a rehab assignment here soon. I know Polanco hasn't been good this year, but if you can get Polanco back and get him going, that's another boost to this lineup. So some really good news on the injury front. Right now, Luis Castillo is slated to pitch tomorrow. I still think, right? Um, let's see if I can pull it up. I I can't. Um, Emerson Hancock was in, in the clubhouse today. What I think they're going to do is option a reliever, whether that's Degas, um, who they called up today because Diaz went back down, or you know, whoever else, whoever else is in that pen that I'm forgetting right now that might be down there. I think they'll option him. I think Hancock will likely pitch tomorrow. Don't quote me on that. Um, you know what? Let's check. Let's check Twitter because maybe maybe something has happened. Um, let me see here. Let's see. Divish is usually good. Let's go to Mr. Divish. No. Maybe Shannon Dreyer has something. I just want to see if maybe they've announced something. No, uh, no announcement yet. But anyways, it would make sense. Start Hancock tomorrow. Um, it's going to be a tough one against Garrett Crochet. Listen, here's the deal. Hancock should be able to hold this lineup in check. If this is Emerson Hancock tomorrow. Give me five, six innings. Hold them to one or two runs. Hopefully Crochet only goes six and then you can score off the bullpen. And if you don't win, you know, listen, I want the sweep, but if you don't, you took three out of four. Give your big three, Castillo, Gilbert, and Kirby an extra day's rest and line them up for Texas. Line them up to face the Rangers, okay? Um, I don't know why I said okay like that. That sounded douchey. I was checking something on the, on the computer there. You know, line up your big three. And no, it's not throwing the game away tomorrow. It's It's not. Like, the White Sox are really bad. Hancock can hold that lineup in check. Maybe you squeak out a couple runs against Crochet. You find a way to win. If that's what they do. If that's what they decide to do. I think it makes some sense. And then you get the big three going in the big series. If you can go to that series against Texas six and a half up. I mean, imagine if you swept it. That, that, that That's dreaming big. But even winning it. That, that's a huge blow to them. And, and I want my best on the hill for that series. So we'll see what the Mariners do. If they decide to start Castillo tomorrow, totally fine with that too. It, it makes sense. It's on his normal rest. Nothing wrong with that. But uh, we'll see. Maybe Brian Wu slots back in during the Texas series. Who knows? But um, it just seems odd that the MRI was fine on Wu and Hancock's up. That just seems kind of odd to me. So I, I'm thinking it will be Hancock tomorrow. Anyways, great win. I'm going to get out of here. I didn't, I didn't plug it, but Remember to smash that like button, subscribe if you're new. I'm 14 subs away from 3,600. Let's see if we can make that happen tonight. Comment your thoughts on the game down below. Love you all. Have a good night. Go Mariners. Peace.